Hey guys, it's Amy at Zoya Beck and I'm going to do the last part of my series on big biggest books on my TBR. This is going to be the 800s, so 800 to 899 pages um, in these books. Again, just as a reference, I'm only counting the text of the book as in you know, the end to the end and not counting the notes. Um, that to me is separate on nonfiction and classics. So I don't, cause I don't always read everything. So I went with just the, the text from the, the actual novel or the book. So, um, anyway, so we're just going to jump in here cause this is the, the last, uh, again, I have a large personal library that I've been collecting on and adding to <laughs> for decades. And um, this was very enlightening to go through all the books that I do own. So uh, I have a lot of big books. So let's talk about the 23 books on my TBR that are between 800 and 899. So at 801, I have Our Mutual Friend by Charles Dickens. This is his last completed novel. So it will might be a while before I get to it. All I know is about this one is that it's a, I think a man inherits something and then he mysteriously dies and then the aftermath of that. I don't know anything beyond that. I don't want to know. Not yet. Um, oh, wrong way. So here's where I made a mistake. <laughs> right. Here at 801 is also The Burning Stone by Kate Elliott. This is book three in The Crown of Stars. So I made a mistake. The two books that I had in my 900 to 999 series that they were books four and five. So I got my numbers all mixed up. But book three is the one that I did start um, back when I was reading this series and I didn't finish because I'd read it too close to the other two. So um, it's definitely a series I want to get back to. This is epic fantasy. I was really enjoying the first two books, um, but I just, the third one, I stopped at a really cool scene and I don't know why I stopped there either. But anyway, 801. Hopefully we'll get to that again pretty soon. At 802 is um, The Way We Live Now by Anthony Trollope. This is one of his standalones. I don't know a whole lot about this, except I think it's about a man who comes to town who um, has is mysteriously wealthy, but it's not quite sure how or why, or and then kind of the aftermath of his being there. Um, then we have 807, which is Alexander Dumas's The, um, so the Red Fe no, Sphinx. I want to say Phoenix every time. So The Red Sphinx by Alexander Dumas. This is translated from the French by Lawrence Ellsworth. So this book was the book that he was he was publishing as he passed away. So it is, I don't, I don't believe it's complete, but it's supposed to be a direct sequel to The Three Musketeers. I am reading the D'Artagnan Romances, which is, was written in order, but it, there's this gap between the first book and the second book in theirs. And this is supposed to take place after Three Musketeers before 20 years after. So I do want to read this just to see what happens. But um, at 8.07, it's going to be a while before I get there because I got to read the other books, the three books in front of that. That's why I haven't got to that one yet. Um, at, oh, whoops, sorry. I flipped this. At 8.17 is Anna Karenina, Karenina by uh, Leo Tolstoy. This is uh, translated from the Russian by Richard Pevier and uh, Larissa uh, Voloronsky. So um, this is, again, a Russian classic. Um, I'm hoping it'll be easier for me to get into that War and Peace since I've already failed once at that and I want to try it again. But uh, I've heard really good things about this. And again, Russian classic at 8.17. At 8.18 is Armandale by Wilkie Collins. So Wilkie Collins is definitely one of my favorite um, Victorian authors. I want to read more of his stuff. This is a book I've not got to yet. Um, this is about two men who have the same name, but they're not ever supposed to meet. But when they do, there's also some kind of uh, woman who is kind of villainish. I'm not sure what's going on, but sensational novel. Should be fun. Um, then we have uh, 823 is He Knew He Was Right by Anthony Trollope, another standalone. I'm not sure what this one's about, except that I think some guy thinks his wife is cheating on him. And I'm not sure what lengths he goes to prove that or not. I'm not sure. I hear it's good, but anyway, that's 823. And then we have a nonfiction, a people's tragedy. I think this is my only, yeah, this is the only nonfiction I have um, in this group. So a people's tragedy, the Russian revolution, 1891 to 1924 is by Orlando Figgs. Again, at, uh, what did I say? 824 pages. 
Um, so this is one I got from Shannon Goforth. So I'm looking forward to getting to this nonfiction and diving into it. Anyway, so <laughs> 824. It'll take me a while. Um, then I have Shadow Heart at 831. This is by Tad Williams. This is book number four in the Shadow March series. This is the only series of Tad Williams that I have not read. So again, I haven't even started this series. They've all been in these videos, <laughs> except for one book, which is shorter. But three of them have made the list here at some point, and this is the final book. So it's going to be a while <laughs> before I get to that one. I have to read the other three books. Um, at 8, um, oh, 34 is The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton. So this is uh, 1866 New Zealand, I think Gold Rush. And uh, again, historical fiction. Should be good, right? <laughs> um, and then at 836, Dead House Gates by Stephen Erickson. Here's another book that I had started but haven't finished. I've actually read it, tried to read it twice before. I got to 200 or 430 the first time and then I got, then I waited and didn't finish it and then I came back and read 185 and I still didn't, I de it again. So I don't know if I'm ever going to make it through this book. This is book two in Malazana, Book of the Fallen. Um, I really want to continue with the series. I really liked Gardens of the Moon. I just can't get past this book. <laughs> anyway, but that is 836. <laughs> At 837 is A Dark and Distant Shore by Renee, um, Tannehill, I think is how it said. I'm not quite sure. Um, I don't even remember where I picked it. I saw this. This is like an, I, it's like a hundred years, I think, in the Island of Sky. So I'm guessing it's like following families. I'm not sure. Or something close to that. So I don't know. I I picked it up at some point. But that's 837. Another Anthony Trollope. But this one isn't a series. So Can You Forgive Her? is the first book in the Pallister series. So I have not started this series because I want to finish the Barsetshire series first, but this is the, the first one in the next series. So I will someday get to this and I don't know a lot about this. I think it has to do with a lot of political stuff and I think in this book it's about a woman who, I think she gets engaged and then she decides not to. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Um, and then um, at 8.42 is 11.22.63 by Stephen King. This is time travel. Um, about the JFK assassination. So it's, I think, a guy going back trying to, to finish, to make that not happen. Um, this is not one of the ones I'm really interested to really read with Stephen King, but I found it really cheap at a library book sale, so I picked it up. So maybe someday I'll be up for that. I don't know. Not right now, at least. Um, and that was at 8.42. At 8.55 is Little Dort by uh, Charles Dickens. This is one of the ones I really want to pick up, but I, again, I want to read some of the earlier works before I read all the middle to the end ones, uh, like Our Mutual Friend. So I need to <laughs> read some other ones before I get to this, but this is about Amy Dorrit, who um, I believe her her dad uh, has is in debtor's prison, and so she's grown up there, um, and now she's a young woman, and she uh, I think she can leave and come and go as she leaves, but she goes and stays there at night, I think is how it works. Anyway, but I don't know. It has... Things happen. I don't know. It's the, it's the Dickens. And that was 8.55. So at 8.58 is Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurtry. I think I started this at 1.2. I actually was going to join a readathon probably about two or three years ago. I don't remember. <laughs> Didn't start it. Um, but I did have an old um, mass market um, copy. And I'm going to see. Oh, no. Okay, sorry. Um, mass market um, edition. And I got rid of that because I didn't think I was going to read it. And then later... People were talking about it here on booktube and I bought it again. So anyway, so that was 858. At 860 is The Decameron by Giovanni Baccaro, I think is how it said. Uh, this is translated by Wayne A. Rebhorn. So I joined a readathon, read along two, three years ago, and I got uh, 76 pages in. <laughs> but my problem is, is that these are short stories within a framing novel of young men and women who flee um, Florence to get away from the plague. And this is them telling stories over um, several days. And uh, is it 10 days? I don't remember. It's like, I think it's 10 days and everybody tells a story. I'm not quite sure anymore how many days. Anyway, it was fascinating, except I'm really bad with short stories. And so this was like a book of short stories that's 860 pages. Anyway, so someday I would like to finish it. 
not during our pandemic, but at some point. At 860 pages. At 861 is the last book in the Barset Shire series, which is the last Chronicle of Barset. So um, by Anthony Trollope. So again, I would this year I'm hoping to make more progress in that series. I've only read the first book, The Warden. I would like to continue on and read several of them this year. I don't know if I'll get to this one this year, but it's on my list to get done at some point at 861. At 876 is Into the Wilderness by Sarah Donati. I think this is the first book in a series, I believe. I don't know what the series is called, actually. I don't think it tells me now. Um, but it's 1792, and I think a woman goes to a rural or a remote um, part of uh, New York, and I think it's her being in that new area and things that happen. I don't know. I don't even remember where I, I saw this on somebody's channel. And uh, then I, I bought it online and now it's here at 876 pages. It's historical fiction. I, I bought a lot during a certain time period. Um, then we have The Swarm by Frank uh, Swatzinging. I don't know how you say that. No idea. Um, I think this is a horror book, uh, you know, something aquatic, I'm guessing. Uh, translated from the German by Sally Ann Spencer. So I got this book from a friend of mine. She was moving to, and I, she bought it at Borders. <laughs> so it's, it's been a while. I've had it probably a good 10 years. Um, anyway, this was 881. Um, so quite a big chunker. And I'm, I think it's horror. I'm pretty sure it's horror. I mean, I've had it a while. Um, another 881 is Life and Fate by Vasily. Grossman, which is translated from the Russian by Robert Chandler. So this um, was a book that's um, that goes with the Stalingrad that I had in another video. Um, again, this is an early glimpse of my Christmas present to myself because I'm hoping to read this series. So um, anyway, but this is uh, Life and Fate and it's at 881. And again, it's uh, eight, 1941, uh, you know, Russia. So I think it's it's definitely about war, about the World War II. Um, and then at 882 is David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. So again, another one in that, one of the books I want to read, but I haven't got to yet. So it's definitely a big chunker and it's one of the later ones. So I want to make sure I read a couple of the earlier ones first, but I will get to it. And I know it's about, it follows him from life to death, or at least a lot of his life. I don't remember how it goes. Um, and then the last one in our 800 to 899, we are at 889, and that is Middlemarch by George Eliot. So this is, this novel is one I've been, every year I'm like, I'm gonna pick that up. I'm gonna pick that up. Haven't picked it up yet. So this deals, it's a yeah, Victorian, so it has, uh, it I think is in a town, this town, and it follows the inhabitants of Middlemarch. And um, again, a lot of people rave about how much they love it. There's other people who don't like it. And I, I kind of want to read more George Eliot. I've only read Silas Marner. So this is a book I've been pick, wanting to pick up every year. And I keep going, I'm going to read it in March. Yeah, it doesn't happen in March. So I need to pick another month. Just read it. But anyway, that is the last of my 800 series of those ones. So um, there's a lot of books here. Are there any books that are your favorites or ones that you think I should read sooner rather than later? Um, is there anything that you think I should definitely bump up for next year to make sure I get it on my TBR? I'm definitely going to be doing a goals video next week um, talking about that and, uh, you know, the <laughs> big books are going to be part of that. So if there's anything you think I should uh, focus in on, let me know. Or, you know, again, just let me know if you liked any of these books. That's always a good thing, too. Anyway, um, that's it for my series on the biggest books on my TBR. I hope you enjoyed all four videos. And uh, I, it was quite enlightening to see how many big books I did own and how many I haven't re read. I mean, I've read, you know, quite a few, but not nearly as much as I own. So I need to, I need to make some progress. But I say that about everything. So anyway, um, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.